This week, says technology writer and commentator Arthur Goldstuck, Telcom once again tried to put the brakes on the future. It lodged an application, he writes, in the High Court seeking to interdict communications regulator ICASA from going ahead with its invitation to apply for high-speed spectrum. Most significantly, Telcom, he says, seeks an order interdicting the completion of the spectrum assignment process. Well, let's try and make some sense of this. Why did this happen? How big a problem is this, particularly for consumers? Arthur Goldstock, good afternoon to you and welcome. So what exactly has Telcom done? And perhaps more importantly, what's behind its thinking, if you can answer that question? Good afternoon, Jeremy. Firstly, one has to express some sympathy for Telcom. I know people will uh, regard that as uh, strange. But uh, the truth of the matter is that the spectrum allocation process, or what they call the invitation to apply, the ITA uh, for spectrum, uh, is not exactly an ideal document. It doesn't truly open the way uh, to competition, and it doesn't create a level playing field either. So Telcom wants to firstly substitute the terms of service. That's a course hearing in part A of the application that will be heard in the first two weeks of January. Then they want an order interdicting the completion of spectrum assignment until their concerns have been addressed. And that's only going to happen in February. And then after that, they want to completely set aside it passes um, ITA, not just the ITA for spectrum, but also what they call the wholesale open access network, which will provide a pool of spectrum that small players uh, can draw on. So you can see that this is going to be a drawn-out uh, process. And as I said, one can have sympathy for telecom. They do have a point that we're going to be stuck with this allocation for the next 20 or 30 years. So uh, it should be carefully considered. The problem with their argument is that they and other players, in particular in government, have jointly held back the evolution of um, access of broadband and the like. Uh, on and off for almost 25 years now. So wanting to uh, protect the next 20 years uh, while ignoring mm. the ills of the last uh, 25 years is a little disingenuous. Arthur, to be fair, yes. is it too late for the regulator then to change course? It's uh, n never too late in terms of the uh, process and the procedure because the regulator first issued an ITA in 2016 for this uh, spectrum and was taken to court by the Minister of Communications at the time. And that put a halt on it. They then withdrew it a year later. And we've waited four years since that ITA. So, of course, they could again withdraw it and we could wait another mm. uh, four years. And that's what keeps uh, happening in this environment. Telcom also says it's critical that it gains access to lower frequency spectrum, 700 megahertz and 800 megahertz. Why is that important to Telcom? That's a key area for rolling out uh, 5G uh, services in what they call the low frequency bands. And uh, that's really the most cost effective spectrum um, range, you could say, in which to roll out 5G. So it makes sense for anyone who's trying to play catch-up to really um, draw on that spectrum. The problem with the existing spectrum in those bands, 700 to 800 megahertz, is firstly it's occupied by analog TV. We're supposed to have had digital migration in 2011, which should have freed up uh, that spectrum then already. Here's another example where we're nine years behind because of the regulatory sloth, firstly of the ICASA, and then of the Ministry of Communications, unable to actually make urgent decisions or move decisively uh, in this area at all. And then the other uh, aspect is that spectrum or th that part of the 700 to 800 mega spectrum that is available, based on research we conducted in the last few months amongst all the operators, <laughs> is what they call dirty spectrum. In other words, it's uh, not really appropriate to use. There's too much interference and therefore it's not ideal uh, for 5G. So at the moment, licensing 700 to 800 megahertz spectrum is almost futile, and it has to wait on so many other things to happen. Mm. At, at what point is the consumer starting to be disadvantaged if that's not happening already? You could argue that the consumer has been disadvantaged for, in terms of high-speed spectrum for the past 15 years. 
the last time high-speed spectrum was allocated broadly was in 2005, when 3G spectrum was awarded to uh, MTN and Vodacom, and then shortly thereafter to Cell C. Since then, we haven't had any real allocation of high-speed uh, broadband, and that is a primary factor behind the continued high cost of broadband in South Africa. We keep asking why is our data so expensive compared to other countries in Africa, never mind the rest of the world, and that's the reason. For 15 years, government and the regulator has been sitting on this valuable resource that could have made life easier for all its citizens. From the research company Worldwide Works, Arthur Goldstock, thank you very much indeed.